Okay, so we talked a little bit about how to identify that a false breakout may or may not be occurring. And if that's so, what, what are some strategies we can use to help us become better traders along that as well when we think that a false breakout might be occurring? So that's what this lesson is about, is, is you know, your strategic approach to these types of things, these false trend line breaks or potentially false trend line breaks. And once again, uh, Hard fast rule, once a trend line is broken, no matter how it's broken, you know, the trend is over. That is the hard fast rule. Again, you're well served following that rule, takes emotion, hope out of it, takes a lot of extra analysis out of it. So nothing wrong with that as far as, once that trend line is broken, the trend is over. However, false breaks do happen, frequently happen. So you, there might be ways that we can use a strategic approach to really kind of deal with them and help us be better traders. And we're gonna talk about how we can use support and resistance lines in terms of our strategy, but also how to apply filters around this too in this lesson. So let's, let's get into that, how we might be able to deal with uh, these potential false breakouts uh, in terms of strategy. So here's an old friend here. Let's say we saw this this happening, right? We saw this uh, image here on the, on the left there, uh, as far as um, uh, you've got this nice uptrend that you bought into this nice uptrend and before you see the definite turnaround there, but let's say you're seeing this uptrend and you s first see the support line is broken. And you're thinking, you know what? That support line's broken, but maybe that's just temporary profit taking. You can see we had this nice long trend before that and we bought in on the, in this example, on the third touch but let's say if you bought in sooner even, then you'd have this nice long trend that you've been making a nice profit. And maybe there's just some pe temporary profit taking, maybe it's just gonna go down or sideways a little bit and then re resume that trend. So if the close is below the trend line, you're thinking, well, maybe it might be okay to, to hang in there a little bit, just hang in there a little bit more. So if you were to use this as a strategy around that, what you could do is adjust your stop loss order to kind of lock in profits, right? We saw when we bought, you can you put in and look at the lesson around stop loss orders and how to use these orders. But basically, you're going to set a stop loss at a certain point. In this case, would be moving above what you bought it at. So if it if you're wrong and it's not a false breakout and it keeps going down, you'll be able to automatically sell because of the order you placed and lock in uh, lock in some profits there. The other thing you can do, like in this example, is adjust the total amount of the money committed to the trade. Right. So. Let's say we bought in here at a certain amount and we could say, okay, we're seeing some bear signs. We're seeing support line breaks. Instead of selling everything, maybe what we do is we sell some, uh, but not all of it to reduce the risk and lock in some profit. And then we can sell all of it later on as, as we get a more definite sell signal as it starts to make that turn. So the idea is I've made a profit. I'm gonna lock in some of those profits. I think I might have a false breakout, maybe some temporary profit taking. I'm gonna hang in there a little bit, but with a smaller position, a smaller amount committed, because I've already taken some of it out. And if it looks like it goes south and it's really just, it is a definite breakage and it keeps going down, as in this example it does, well then I'll, I'll sell at that, I'll, I'll sell and uh, still make a profit, but I'll sell, uh, I'll get out of it completely at that point. And then I'll sell it all later on as I hit that more definite sell signal. So you see in this example here, where we have buy and then you can see where across that line then maybe you're saying I'm, I might sell here but I might not we hang in there and then it starts to see where we're definitely having a close all the way below the break line now we're, we're really selling at that point uh, and maybe we already took out some profits at the sell maybe and then we took the rest out of the sell definitely but if it had turned and gone the other direction then we still have some money in and that we could keep running that trend and again with all this you don't have to be perfect right you want to start using strategies to help you know, lock in profits and things so you don't have to be perfect on all this. You just have to be, you know, kind of smart about it. Another way that things could happen is let's say a resistant line breaks, right? So the buyers or the bulls have broken through. They're, you were on a deep downward trend uh, and it's been broken through. The trend is well established. You can see the downtrend here on this image is established. You could have bought, you know, you can see that on the second touch or the third touch that it's definitely uh, a downtrend established. Even at the fourth touch, you could say, well, there's, it's still part of a downtrend. And the question is, will it, be, it become a new uptrend once it's broken through, right? We're looking at, is this a false signal? It's already broken through. This whole idea is it's broken through. So the strategy around this on, on a resistance line break, you know, it's been in a downtrend, it's broken through, will this become a new uptrend? So the strategy, wait for the second or third touch to buy into the new uptrend. That's our orange line there. You can see we got a second touch there especially since we're coming out of a real steep downtrend in this particular example, this might be a case where it might be safer to wait for a third confirming, real establishing 
a third uh, touch just to be sure, just because it just came out of a big downtrend in this example, if, for example. And that's the orange line there. Another thing you do is, uh, is what's called selling short. And basically you're banging the price will continue to go down at number two or number three touch of the resistance line. So we're back in the blue numbers there and you're, you're seeing it, you can be selling short at those periods. And then you close your short position once it breaks through the, and then a resistance line breakout. You, so you're booking your profits at that point. So you're, you're kind of betting this in terms of, of that way or investing it that way. Uh, when we get into order taking about how to sell short and how to cover your shorts, you know, we'll, they'll, we'll get into that, how it works. But the idea is you think it's going to go down. You're investing in a way that you're betting on it to go down. It does go down. And then once it breaks that line, you're getting out. So again, you don't have to be perfect with any of this. And for really for most people who aren't selling short, they're really doing that first strategy of like, I see it's breaking through. I'm waiting for the second or third touch to buy in a new trap trend. And if that doesn't form, then I'm still staying out. I'm still staying on the sidelines. That's okay. I'm watching for new trends or new indicators, new confirmations to come along with a resistance line break. There's also you know, different, some interesting rules out there or different ways you can approach it too. Beyond this, that's the core part. One interesting one is the one, two, three rule is created by Trader Vic, a you know, famous trader, Trader Vic, uh, author as well. And in this, the whole part of this and all of this is the goal is to manage a big challenge of these temporary pullbacks. In this case of, of an established uptrend. So the, the one, two, three rule is regarded, related to definite established uptrends and trying to you know, sell out of a temporary pullback. You want to try to run that, you want to keep running with that trend. It helps you to not get out too early. So if you were, you know, let's say bought early in the trend, you had this nice run up, then it pulls back. It's the idea of the one, two, three rule is that you're not selling during the pullback. Um, even, even across the trend line, you're not selling during the pullback. You're trying to work through this um, temporary challenge as far as a, a, pull, a temporary pullback so you can keep your money in and let that profit keep running. So how does the one, two, three rule work? Let's, let's take a look at that. So let's walk through this in steps. So first off, let's say on this particular one here, you can see we have a nice uptrend. We bought on the second touch in this example, could have been on the third touch, but we bought in there. And you can see we have a nice price run up, nice profit up there. And then we see cross the trend line, that's our sell signal. And so that's the first time we tell us, oh, we got to sell, right? As soon as it breaks that line, we're selling. Or if you want to wait till it fully it's a full close across, you could sell then too. So, um, but you're looking at this line and you're saying, I don't know if I really want to sell. And there might be some really good logistical re reasons behind this or tactical reasons, not hope and praying, but really some things that happen. If, if you look right before that sell, um, you know, going back from the sell thing, you see there's a, a gap up, right? There's a big, there's a jump between the two, two white candlesticks where they, there's a, where the prices don't overlap or the price range doesn't overlap. A gap up is always a good, um, you know, bullish, you know, sign, right? It, it doesn't mean it's necessarily going to happen that way. They'll keep going up, but it definitely is a good sign that something good is happening. So you had a gap up. Uh, and then also you see there, we have all these higher highs. You know, we have these high closes all in a row, uh, you know, seven of them since you bought one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Since you bought, it kept going up seven straight times. So that's good too. But then now there's this temporary pullback, or maybe it's a temporary pullback. You don't know, but you reach that peak and then you start seeing that the prices now start going red and the candle starts to go red and it's starting to go down and it crosses that trend line. So with that good stuff, all those high closes in a row and the gap up, do I, do I really sell because it crossed that trend line? Or are people just taking some profits and they're just doing that? What, how do I apply my one, two, three rule to this is the idea. So there's how you do it. So let's put on some lines on this and this is how the one, two, three rule works. So first thing you do is in order for the one, two, three rule to be activated, you have to have the support line broken, right? That's the whole idea. You're trying to see if this is a false signal. So first step, it's got to be broken, right? And you can sell right there. You know, that's always the established rule. You can just sell there. But if you want to try one, two, three to see if it's more of a false uh, type of false type of, of breakage, uh, then the second step you would do after the support line is broken is you're watching for it to test of higher highs. You might go down a little bit more, might go sideways, but you're then you're looking for a turnaround and for it to go back up and test the higher highs. That's that number two there. See how I draw on a line? Whatever was the highest point of that trend before it was broken, that's my, where I'm going to draw my line for my number two of the one, two, three rule. And you can see it was actually a red candlestick. It was a down day, 
But the, the bulls, the buyers, tried to push that price higher. They tried to keep going with that uptrend, tried to turn that into an update, but the, the bearers, the sellers, went out on that day and then pushed it down and then kept pushing it down past the trend line. But that's where we're looking at that highest high on number two. And then number three is where you look at where the previous significant low was, and this could have been higher up on the trend line, but not in this example. The previous significant low that approached the, the trend line is, is where you draw a line straight across, that'd be your number three. And, and once that's broken, then you have real definite confirmation that this is not just, a, um, not just a temporary thing, it's a definite thing as far as a turnaround. So if we look at the one, two, three in this, in this example, you can see, of course, the support line was broken. And the highs, they had, a little, they had a little pullback, had a little turnaround, but it never really tested that higher high. See how the highest point after the support line, after the trend line, never got up to number two, never broke through number two. Uh, it was really what we're looking for. We're looking for, it to break, for this to have worked. In this case, it didn't. It should have, if, we, if it worked, it would have been broken through at number two at this point and then establishing or reestablishing that strong 10 trend after a temporary pullback. That's what we'd look for is that breakthrough of the number two of the higher highs. And it didn't. Instead, it went down. And maybe it went down a couple more you know, days, a couple more red bars, and we're saying, well, maybe we're just in a little pullback, a little narrow trading range that's gonna go back on trend, gonna to try to come back to that number two and go higher high, but it never did. In this particular example, it went down to the number three line, the test of the previous significant low, and then broke right through it, right? It broke through and that's your confirmation. As soon as it breaks through, that's enough confirmation and you're selling at that point you know, to get out once it breaks through that. So as you can see in this example, I would have made more profit in this example if I would have sold at number one, if I would have followed the rule, and not you know, tried to test for a pullback. Uh, you know, if it would have broke through at number two, then I would have been rewarded on that, right? So the idea is you're looking at other confirming factors, you're looking at things to see how temporary this pullback is or if it really is a reversal, like in this case. But even by setting my three at the previous significant low, between when I bought and that previous significant low, I made profit. I did not make as much profit as, as I would have from the green arrow up to the number one where I sold in this example, but I would have still made some profit and tested out the, the pullback uh, there. So uh, this isn't a case where it, it didn't fully work out as far as, it worked out in terms of still getting profits, but didn't work out as far as hanging in there through a pullback and then breaking through number two. And that's the idea of the one, two, three rule. You're looking for it to break through a number two and in your downside, you're protecting yourself with the number three uh, as far as your significant low confirmation.